What is up everyone from YouTube? Tom again from The State of Real and today we're gonna to talk about fuel systems. So if you're like me and want to build a turbocharged car, a supercharged car, or a, a car that's gonna be running a lot of nitrous, um, you have to understand in order to make more power, you have to have more fuel if you're adding more air like this little turb ski right here. So um, before I jump into modifying your car to flow more fuel, we're gonna talk about some quick things that you can do to basically make your fuel system, your stock one, flow better. Um, down here on the floor, uh, I have a stock fuel rail for my car. And this is a banjo connection. And these banjo connections are often very restrictive because they have this teeny little hole here that the, the fuel has to take a 90 degree angle through this line, come around and force itself down into that little hole. And in the Honda Prelude 97 BB6 fuel system, there are two banjo bolt connections. There's one on the rail and there's one right at the fuel system. So basically what you can do to get around this is get rid of all of this. Um, and in order to do that, you would basically disconnect your stock fuel filter, which happens to be right behind your motor in a really annoying spot down, down, down in here, some uh, in, in that area right there. Um, that helps, <laughs> but you have to disconnect that fuel filter, chop the line off and, or just chop the line off. You don't have to take a filter off, chop the line off, use a compression fitting. And then you can run uh, a, you know, an aftermarket fuel, you know, hose, whether it's rubber or PTFE to high flow fuel rail. Once that's done, the next thing that you're going to have to do um, is obviously buy bigger injectors <laughs> because in order to flow more fuel, the injectors have to be bigger. And I would say after that, that should really be able to get you somewhere somewhere in the 550 on stock prelude lines. So if that's where your goal is, then that's fine. But if you want to push past, you know, the 550 mark, um, the way that you're going to have to go about it is upgrading your entire fuel system. Now, I made a little sketch up here of things to talk about because I tend to be long winded and this keeps me on track. First thing first is your fuel, your fuel pump. Most likely if you're trying to add power to your car with a power adder, um, your fuel pump has already been upgraded. If it hasn't, I highly suggest doing that. Um, and if you follow this right or wrong here, uh, basically they're for four cylinders, the two common fuel pumps are Walbro 255s and 450s. Um, and basically, a 255 could probably flow you enough fuel to make around 450 horsepower. Um, don't quote me because it's all based on, you know, how big the displacement of your four, four cylinder is and all that stuff to figure out, you know, how much fuel it can actually use. But um, basically, these are the two most common fuel pumps that are used the size wise, and that's liters per hour. Um, so decide where your power goal is. 450 will take you up to 700. So if you just wanna slap a 450 in there, that's totally fine. I have a 450 LPH uh, Walbro in my car. Um, next thing is gonna be your larger fuel lines. So we talked about the restriction of your stock fuel lines. If you need to upgrade to a larger fuel line. I, up, I upgraded to a dash six AN, okay? And the dash six AN is a pretty common one for people that are gonna try to shoot for around six, 700 horsepower. Um, and 
anything above that, you start moving into 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. And that's some crazy stuff um, that I never want to have to deal with. So moving right across here, 6 a.m. Um, to how big you need it to be. I already talked about that. The next thing you need to talk about is the difference between PCE and PTFE. So a lot of people want to buy the cheapest fuel lines and throw them on there so that they can get going. Um, I highly suggest you determine and spend the money for the proper fuel lines. PCE are the black rubber kind. PTFE are the, the uh, Teflon lined fuel uh, lines. And the difference between the two is PCE breakdown under high ethanol fuels like E85 and above. PTFE are Teflon lined and they prevent the absorption that ethanol has of water. So if you put PCE lines on your car and want to run ethanol, what ends up happening is the ethanol is extremely corrosive and causes your fuel lines to break down and then the next thing you know, you go lean. And that's not good. So the other thing that I've seen happen is people use the PCE lines with ethanol and it actually strips rubber out and causes their injectors to clog up. So hence going lean. So um, if you wanna go lean and blow up your motor just because you wanted to buy you know, $30 lines versus like 60 to $100 lines, uh, that's up to you. I highly suggest just going with the PTFE lines. They're a little bit more pain in the neck to uh, install, but they are freaking awesome. They flow really well. They don't absorb moisture that cause your injectors to rust or to have really slow cranking times. So figure out if you ever wanna run ethanol because this is the one that you're gonna need for the E. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is with my car, we're gonna go through it, but I use 20 feet of, um, ooh, I use 20 feet of uh, the Dash 6AN line. So you'll see kits online that have 20 feet and that should be sufficient for your car. That was only enough to do from the tank to the fuel rail and then from the fuel rail to the flex fuel sensor. Yes, I got a flex fuel sensor. Um, and then from the flex fuel sensor, to um, the actual stock return line, which we'll talk about that in, here in a minute. Um, the next thing you wanna look into is a high flow fuel filter that's rated for E85 if you're gonna run uh, high ethanol fuels. Next thing across there is a question that I get is, what micron should I use? And micron is the measurement between the mesh that causes the filter action in the filter. Now, I, I believe your stock fuel uh, sock on your fuel pump. It's like this filter that sticks off the bottom of the, of the pump um, is a hundred microns. So you want to run something a little bit below that uh, in order to catch any kind of dirt. Now keep in mind your injectors also have filters on them to catch things as well. So I ended up running uh, for a while, I ran at hundred micron with a hundred micron fuel filter um, with no issues and it kept me awake. So I ended up buying one that was a uh, 60 micron and installed that one in my car. Now, um, high flow external regulator, okay? So most of the time, as you can see, you have these fuel pressure regulators like this one that's actually on the rail. A lot of times these are gonna end up being too small to vent the amount of fuel that you're flowing to keep the proper fuel pressure. So what I ended up doing was I bought one off eBay that everyone talked crap on, and it has been on here for almost an entire year and no problems. I've run E85 with it um, and not one issue. And it is still in my car right here at the firewall. I'll have links to probably all this stuff in the description, but um, it is great. You can run it with a deadhead fuel rail or with a flow through fuel rail. Um, meaning a return fuel rail. And we'll talk about that in a minute as well. So next thing is your high flow fuel rail. <laughs> Look at that. Um, so 
you literally can use any performance fuel rail until you start getting up into crazy power. Um, any performance AEM, whatever your favorite name brand is, as long as it's not the stock one, it'll probably do you a solid. I've never run the stock one on my car, but I've heard that it is extremely restrictive and you got to do a lot of work. So for like 120 bucks, you can buy a performance fuel rail that, uh, you know, flows more fuel. Chances are you already have larger, uh, injectors, duh. Um, but as you, you know, increase your fuel, sorry, increase your power level in your car, you want to upgrade your injector size accordingly. And you can do that with uh, injector calculators that are all over the internet, specifically designed for your car or cars like yours. Um, but it's basically a calculation to figure, figure out how many CCs you need to run. And I think mine were 1200 or 1400, can't remember, but that's enough to make 600, a little bit above 600 horsepower um, and still stay under 80% duty cycle, which is what you want to do in order to, you know, keep them healthy for, you know, a long time. So now that the long winded part is over and we're like 12 minutes into the video, now I'm actually going to crawl under my car here and show you guys what you need to do in order to do this. So starting from the top here, I have my fuel system coming up from underneath my car into my Micron filter. And then that Micron filter actually takes uh, a very aggressive uh, 180 degree turn. And then another 90 here, a little bit sharper than 90 and goes right into my fuel rail. From my fuel rail, it then goes across and starts returning itself to the fuel pressure regulator. So underneath of this mess of fuel lines, it goes down here to my fuel pressure regulator. Um, and I think that is, let me double check here. Yes, it goes into my fuel pressure regulator right here off to the side. Boom, 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 right there. And after that, it then vents out of the bottom and goes to my flex fuel sensor, which is right here. And then from my flex fuel sensor, it goes down and connects to the stock fuel line that is the return line. And that's done with a compression fitting. Up here, where it comes underneath of the car, um, there is actually a set of rails that hold all of the stock fuel lines, which we're gonna go under with the creeper and check that out. Uh, so underneath of here, as you can see, I have my stock fuel lines and I also have my uh, lines for uh, uh, the PTFE lines, I should say. And I basically just tuck them underneath of the stock fuel lines and it holds them there nice and tight. Now granted, I did use some uh, straps there to hold that one in real tight to the firewall, but that goes the whole way back up into where the tank is. Now on a fifth gen Prelude, there is a rubber, or I should say a plastic tank guard. And that tank guard, whew, and that tank cover uh, can just be unbolted and you can actually slip the PTFE line or your fuel line up over top of the tank. And that's when you start connecting it with your other, um, you can use a compression fitting if you wanna hook it straight to the stock um, fuel pump carriage, or you can actually drill a hole through the top of your fuel pump um, and just send the line straight down onto the fuel pump itself. So you basically just drill a hole through the top of the carriage and come down right onto your fuel pump. And that's what I did. That way I literally have no restriction coming from the pump to the engine bay. There's literally no banjo bolts. It's a straight shot up until it gets to that first 90 degree turn where it goes into the, the fuel filter. And then from the fuel filter, it goes to the fuel rail. From the fuel rail, it gets bled off by the, uh, the fuel pressure regulator. And then from the fuel pressure regulator to the flex fuel sensor, and then the flex fuel sensor to the stock return line. Whew. 
that's it. That's all you got to do. It took a while. Um, I didn't buy any brain name, uh, brain, uh, brain name, brand name, um, you know, connectors. They have all these different AN fittings that you can buy that are brand name, brand name that are said to be way better. But honestly, all the Chinese ones work just as well. Now, one tip I will give you, if you get the PTFE lines that are stainless steel braided on the outside like mine, use a grinder to cut them. And before you cut them, use clear packing tape to hold all the stray ends down. Do not use electrical tape. Um, and make sure you put your fitting over the line prior to, because you almost never get it on there um, before you cut it, because the ends are made of stainless steel mesh and they just flare out and it's uh, a nightmare. So this is a long-winded video and I need some uh, beer to refresh my mouth here. My throat is a little dry, um, but guys, I hope this helped you out. I know it was a long video. Uh, sorry, but not sorry, because you're gonna be making power with this information. So um, until next time, guys, later.